Welcome class back to chapter 10, Files and Exceptions. This is the third lecture video. We'll cover the objective of exceptions. So we've been working with exceptions in the form of traceback errors as we've been going through all of the material that we've learned through chapters one through nine. Now we're gonna learn how can we do an exception so that we don't have a traceback error happening in our file. So we're gonna do a simple example of dividing by zero. And I'm going to just run this here. And we're gonna see that the traceback error is zero division error. So with that information, I can go ahead and do what we call an exception. So that exception would then be used here where we can try, we can try this particular statement, and then we would say accept, okay? So if this particular traceback error comes back, then we're gonna say print, you can't divide by zero. So let's go ahead and modify our code and um, see that we'll get that exception print statement now. Okay, so we get back our print statement of you can't divide by zero. Next, we're gonna look at another example where we are going to add some input, some input into our file. So we're gonna ask for two numbers and then we're going to divide them. So this code is on page 193 of your book. Okay, so upon running this, I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the same numbers that I worked with before, five and zero. And here we're getting back the zero division error, integer division or module by zero. So the same error that we um, received before. So we're going to enter in some code that is going to allow us to work with our try and our accept into this um, file here. Okay, so I've entered in the try accept else block. And I just wanted to leave this code in here for now so I could show you where it was actually moved to. So we wanna to try to divide, okay? So that is going to go into our try block. If that is successful, so if we have no errors, traceback errors coming to, we're gonna go ahead and print out the answer. So the else is if the try is successful, and then the accept is going to respond to the appropriate traceback error. So let's go ahead and run this now. Okay, five. Oh, I gotta have my cursor in the right spot. Okay, and we get our print statement there. And if we do 10 and we do two, okay, we get five. And then if we enter Q, we're gonna go ahead and exit out. Okay, one more thing that we could in put in here, we could put round around our answer so that we don't get any decimal places. Okay, so as in we got 5.0 here. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. Okay, I'll go ahead and do 10 and two. Okay, and I'm getting five without that decimal place. And again, Q to quit. Handling the file not found error exception. So now we're gonna be looking at how we can respond if a particular file, if we're trying to read it, for example, is not found. So we're going to work with alice.py and I'm gonna change the file name here to alice2 because alice2 does not exist in my files and I'm gonna go ahead and run it, okay? And I come up with the file not found traceback error, no such file or directory, alice2.txt. So now we're going to add code here with our try and accept so that if the file is not found, we'll go ahead and respond with an appropriate print statement. So I've also added in the else block. So remember the else block is what is executed if the try is successful. And then again, the exception right here is file not found error. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it with ls2.txt. Okay, sorry, the file ls2.txt does not exist and that's exactly what is here. Now let's change this to just alice and run it. Okay, and the file ls.txt has about 29,465 words. So using the split, okay, we were splitting and storing that in words, and so splitting out of space, okay, and then doing length on words to see how many we have, and then using those variables in our print statement. Next, we're gonna refactor our code, and we are going to put our, our, our statements in a function. 
and then we're going to work with multiple files. So I'm going to go ahead and update my code to reflect this code, pages 197 and 198. So I saved alice.py first as word underscore count dot py, um, moved code into a function called count words, which is getting a parameter of path. Okay, so we have that down here in our for statement, so we're sending along path, and path is going to come from each one of these file names um, stored in our list of file names. So if I run this code, okay, I get all of these with the information of their counts back. Now if I were to go in here and just change this to Alice2 okay, and run it, okay, sorry the file Alice2.txt does not exist. We can also fail silently, meaning that if we have a traceback error, we can just code the word pass. Okay, so let's go ahead and update this line here to just say pass, and then go ahead and run. Okay, and notice that there is no output for alice2.txt. So when do we know when to fail silently? Okay, so deciding which errors to report. So my guidance would be that if someone on the other end of your program that you have coded for them is running it and they know how to respond to a particular error, so like if alice2.txt doesn't exist, do they know that they should go find out why alice2.txt doesn't exist? Or if they're a person that's going to be running the program and doesn't necessarily need to know or we maybe perhaps would not know how to deal with the error, that's when we would go ahead and use pass. Next we'll look at our lab 10-6 addition. So one common problem when prompting for numerical input occurs when people provide text instead of numbers. When you try to convert the input, input to an integer, you'll get a value error error. Okay? So value error will be our exception. Write a program that prompts for two numbers okay, and then add them together and print the result. Catch value error if either input value is not a number and then print a friendly error message. Test your program by entering two numbers and then by entering some text instead of a number. You're welcome to do a while loop for this or you do not have to. So a while loop is not required for 10-6. Questions on this section, please let me know.